Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Rosalind Russell, George Brent, and Chester Morris in Flight for Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When a star plays the same kind of part again and again, that star, to use the Hollywood term, is tight. But this horrible fate can never happen to Miss Rosalind Russell because she makes every performance a new adventure in acting. She turns from drama, uh, drama to comedy and back again with the greatest of ease for herself and the greatest of pleasure for her audience. Her last appearance here was in a rapid-fire comedy. Tonight, with George Brent and Chester Morris, she plays a woman flyer in a powerful action drama, her RKO screen success, Flight for Freedom. Besides being her co-star tonight, George Brent is also a fellow pilot and, incidentally, has been instructing flying cadets for the Army. But in Flight for Freedom, Chester Morris gives him plenty of competition, both in flying and romance. The action of tonight's play takes us around the world to places that once were symbols of romance and are now the battlefields of freedom. And we don't have to dig very deep into our mailbag to find letters from most of them. Lux Toilet Soap is getting around these days to New Guinea and North Africa, to the Aleutians, Iceland, New Caledonia, and other faraway spots. Many of our boys out there hear us by short wave every week. They tell us that uh, they're still using our product. It comes in boxes from home, and in some places they can get it at a PX. That's Army for a post exchange. But wherever it comes from, a cake of Lux Toilet Soap is a nice piece of property to have wherever you are. It's curtain time now, and here's the first act of Flight for Freedom, starring Rosalind Russell as Tony Carter, George Brent as Randy Britton, and Chester Morris as Paul Turner. Over targets. All objectives as indicated. Lost the attack group. Somewhere in the far Pacific, a squadron of American dive bombers roars in over its objective. The target for today is a cluster of tiny islands, pinpoints of land, almost lost in the vast blue sea. These are the islands of the Japanese mandate. For 20 years, they were the Japs' most carefully guarded secret. The surrounding waters and the sky above barred to foreigners. But we have our secrets, too. And the Japs are discovering right now. As our planes know where they're going and what they'll find. And the success of our attacks depends, strangely enough, on the career of a pretty girl. It began back in 1932 when she was making her first solo flight. As she came in over the runway, another flyer was preparing to take off. The girl ship wavered uncertainly and then swerved toward the second plane. Tony! Tony, are you hurt? Get her out of the plane. It's okay. I'm all right. You're not hurt? No. You sure? Only my feelings. How did you happen to hit it? How did I? Didn't you see what happened? I was coming in for a landing, and that clumsy joke, he doesn't know his left hand from his right. Oh, Paul, my first solo, and it had to wind up this way. You were fine, Tony. You kept your head. Most of my students would have crashed good. I'm proud of you. Miss Carter. Yes? I'm from the Department of Commerce. I'm afraid I'll have to ground you for 60 days. But you can't do that. He ran into me. Of course he did. Did you see it happen, Paul? Did you? No, but I know... Well, then what makes you say it's her fault? Well, she's one of my best students. Look, what would you say when a girl on her first solo flight collides with Randy Britton? Hey, hold no. it. Somebody mentioned me? Oh, hi, Paul. Hello, Randy. Was it one of your dodos that clipped me? Yeah, first solo. But this guy's handing out 60 days on principle. First solo, huh? Same thing happened to me in my first solo. Look, Commerce, did you see the accident? No, but I know Well, that... I'll tell you. It wasn't the dodo's fault. I was taken off against traffic. You mean you were on a lift? Well, yeah, I was in a hurry. Well, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. Oh, forget it. Where's the kid? 
Sorry to give you such a scare, kid. Thank you very much. Hey, you're a girl. <laughs> Does that surprise you? There are lots of us around. Oh, yeah, but not in pants. What? Uh, Paul, I, I, I thought you meant it a rule never to teach women. Only when they're good. Well, is this one supposed to be good? Well, at least I know my left hand from my right. Now, look, honey, I didn't mean to start anything, but if I'd known you were a girl, I'd have let him ground you. Oh, now, you're just kidding, aren't you? I know your type, even to the pants. You probably call every man you know by his last name. Well, if you don't like your last name, there are others I can think of that would fit you better. Tony, take it easy. I ought to ground you both just to keep the peace. Well, what about him? He admitted it was his fault. Tony, come on, come on. Now, you don't want to make trouble for Randy. I didn't until I met him. Of course, Randy's right about most women. What do you mean, Paul? Well, all they're after is to make a couple of spectacular flights, you know, for publicity. I hate that as much as he does. Well, I know that, but how could Randy? Well, he could wait to find out before he goes sounding off. <laughs> Randy never waited for anything in his life, Tony. Maybe that's why he's a great flyer. Is he really as good as everybody says? He's better. He's a flyer's flyer. Oh, by the way, tomorrow when you solo, uh, be sure and come in the right way. I did. Oh, no, no. You were the one who was against the traffic. Oh, Paul. All those things I said. He must think I'm horrible. Paul, where is he? The least I can do is explain. <laughs> but don't worry. Besides, flyers aren't good for women, ever. Oh, I know. Every flyer's married to his plane. Well, not quite that bad, but they live 10,000 feet up, Tony, in a world entirely their own. A girl's safer to leave them there. Hmm. Dad always used to say, when you're safe, you're dead. <laughs> Excuse me, lady. Uh, no ladies back here. The front room, please. I beg your pardon? This room, no ladies. Well, uh, isn't this where the flyers hang out? That's right. Well, I'm a flyer. May I have a table, please? Look, it's like a club. See? It's just for men. Well, Johnny always lets me eat back here. Who? Johnny. Or don't you know who you're working for? Madame. I am Johnny. Oh. Oh. How nice. <laughs> I'll just take this table. Lady, if you wasn't a lady, I'd chop you out. Maybe I should. Well, maybe you should take that up with Randy Britton. Huh? You a friend of Randy Britton? Well, yes, uh, I... Did he say to meet him here? Well, I, uh... Why was... didn't you say so? Huh? If Randy says okay, okay. How are you, boys? Oh, hello. Hello, Randy. Hey, Randy, over here. Hi, Johnny. Uh, your lady friend, she's waiting. My lady friend? I'll be back with the menu. You know? Yeah, sure. Hello. Hello. Well, if it isn't, uh, well, uh, who is it? The dodo. Oh, sure. Say, you better be careful. You look almost like a girl. Did uh, you tell Johnny you were expecting to meet me here? Uh, well, uh, here you are. I uh, had to apologize somehow. I mean, the accident being all my fault. Who told you that? Paul. And you knew it, too. You should have said so in the first place. Oh, if I had, you'd have lost a student. How about a martini? Oh, thank you. I'd like one. Oh, Johnny. Martini. Two martinis. Di qualità. Di qualità. Say, uh, tell me something. Why do you object so to women flyers? Oh, now, look, honey, let's not go into that. But really, I'd like to know. All right. Because flying isn't a sport anymore. It's a business for professionals. Look, do the airlines use women pilots? No. Does the Army or Navy? No, but you can't judge And I just that. don't happen to like women who try to be men. Well, I've never tried to be a man. I would like to be a good flyer, though. Why a girl with your looks wants to dress up like a grease monkey, I don't know. <laughs> I presume that's supposed to be a compliment. Well, what I mean is, uh, you look like a pretty special job to me. Why spoil it? Martini, extra special. Oh, thanks, Johnny. Thank you. Well, Dodo, contact. Contact. Very special, eh? Extra, Johnny. Now, scalopino veal, as usual? Well, it's the only thing fit to eat in the place. <laughs> uh, veal scalopini. Oh, is this an invitation to dinner? Well, if you can stand it, I guess I can. Oh, well, uh, may I have some clams first? Sure thing. Clams. Do you really like clams? I adore them. With sauce Delaware? Oh, I never heard of that. You never heard of sauce Delaware? Uh-uh. Well, lady, you haven't begun to live. I got ketchup. Johnny, get a cat. Well, can't a girl have some clams if she wants them? That's just what we're going to do. The best clams in the world with sauce Delaware. But where? In Delaware. <laughs> know something? What? This is a very silly idea, going all the way to Delaware. 
Oh, come on. Relax. I'm relaxed. Well, relax over this way. Come on. I'm not going to kiss you. Well, I didn't think you were. Why not? You're very pretty. But I won't if you don't want me to. Oh, so you're a mind reader, too. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm better at palms. Now, let's see. Uh, I see a strange man, tall, dark. Never mind his look. Is he steady? Steady? Oh, no. Not the guy I'm thinking of. about it? It's beautiful. No, no. I mean the soft silhouette, not the scenery. Oh. Oh, marvelous. Hey, are you crying? What's the matter? <laughs> Just my special reaction to the beauty and the soft silhouette. Imagine being able to spend a whole week here. Well, hadn't we better start back home? I don't have to be back until my wing's fixed. How long will that take? A week. Yes, but I... Oh. All right. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to hand you a shot. I'm not shocked. It's just, I mean, uh, well, I'm not organized to play it. This. For me, it's got to be real. All wool or nothing. Well, how do you know it isn't all wool? If you don't know me, I'd probably bore you sick. Well, people never know each other until they've seen some of the world and tried some of the things in it together. Does it have to be all in one gulp? Well, I, uh, but look, suppose we stay on your terms. Go places and have fun together. Of course, maybe you don't like it. Maybe what's going on inside of me is just a one-way current. How about it? I, uh, I'm going to solo in the morning again. Paul will be waiting for me at the field. Oh, that's right. I forgot. The lady pilot. Mm. Waiter! Jack! Oh, now you're mad. I suppose I would be too in your place. The coffee here isn't very good anyway. I'm oh, sorry. Look. After the best clams in the world, we ought to have the best coffee in the world, don't you think? Hmm? Well, uh, where do you get it? Oh, Virginia Beach. Well, hadn't we better get started? Yeah. Have you ever noticed the way a deep fire at night blacks out the rest of the world? Hmm? What? Sleepy? Mm hmm. Just satisfied to have the rest of the world be you. You know, they say a good flyer is married to his plane. Well, in that case, my plane may have caused a divorce. They say good flyers live in a world of their own, 10,000 feet up. Who says? They. I didn't know there were any other people besides us. You're a flyer. You mean to say you don't know what's in my mind? Uh-uh. Shall I tell you? You. You couldn't say that again, could you? Mm-mm. Loses force with repetition. What would you say if I gave up flying? Why should you? Oh, to become a... a lady. Well, that's a good idea. What would you do? Well, what does a lady usually do? It might be fun to, well, uh... to fix up a house. Interior decorating? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And if I get bored, it might be fun to to train young flyers. Oh, sort of a school? Yeah, something like that. Good idea. Oh, darling. Hey, tide's coming up. Got my foot. Oh, I hate to leave. So do I. We'll come back tomorrow night. Oh, will we? I guess we will. Front, boy, front. Good morning, Miss Carter. Hello. Is uh, Mr. Britton down yet? On the terrace, miss. Thank you. Good morning, darling. Hey, you look beautiful. Thank you, darling. Oh, here, I, I, I've got a present for you, beautiful. A present? Yeah, I had to get the jeweler out of bed to get it. Look, cigarette case. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, look, look at this on the other side. They made up a map of the state, see? Oh, what are those? Well, darling, they're diamonds. Oh, I know, but... Oh, I see. One for New York, Delaware. And this one's Virginia Beach. All the places we've been. Yeah. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you. Wait until next year. There'll be a stone there, stone there, one there. And one in Mexico? Sure. You like bullfights? Yeah, I like swimming. Swimming? Yeah. Well, how about Honolulu? Oh, Randy. 
Hiya. Oh, hello, Mike. Uh, pardon me, Tony. This uh, telegram came for you over at the airport. I uh, thought I'd better bring it over. How did anybody know I was here? <laughs> I was ringling know where the lions are. Uh -huh. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> okay. What is it, Randy? Well, the wing's fixed. You want me to start that flight for the wreck of the California? When? Right now. Not today. Oh, yes. I've got to be in New York by 11. Oh, well, uh, you'll be coming back, won't you? I could wait right here. Well, I can't tell. They want me to fly her down to South America doing a survey job. Oh. Well, uh, you certainly couldn't pass that up, could you? No. I thought it'd take them at least a week to patch that wing. Well, you uh, mustn't worry about it. Go right ahead, Randy. You're a great guy, Tony. Just about all the woman there is. Willing to shove off anywhere, anytime. You drift so well. Yeah. I'm streamlined. Easy on the takeoff and... And no trouble to set down. Meaning what? Well, meaning you... You gotta come down out of the clouds sometime. Yeah. Well, guess we'd better shove off. You, uh... You go along, will you, I... I think I'll take the train, if you don't mind. What's the idea of that? I, uh... Well... Hey, not again. You're not crying. Oh, always when people go away. Last month, my laundry man went back to China. I cried over him. Well, so long, Tony. Goodbye, Randy. What? I mean, so long. That's better. So long, darling. Telegram from Rand Britt, Rio de Janeiro, to Tony Carter, Municipal Airport, New York. Message. Have you ever tried soft gaucho? Signed, Randy. <laughs> Get that cablegram, Tony? Oh, yes, thanks, Paul. Uh, is it, uh, that it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Trouble? No. Nothing I can't handle. I hope. Hand me that small wrench, Mac. Bye. Hey, that's a nice-looking ship you got there. Yeah, ain't you, honey? Hey, haven't I seen you somewhere? Not for a couple of years. Who owns this ship? Paul Turner. He's entering her in the Bendix race, New York to Los Angeles. Oh, good for him. Where can I find him? In the office. Thanks. Hi, Paul. So you finally got yourself a ship, huh? Randy, how are you? Okay. I thought you were in South America. Just got back this morning. Yeah, for good? Ah, oh, keen sabi. I'm supposed to meet a gent at the National Air Races in Los Angeles this week. Got an idea for a new airline out near Singapore. Say, one of your boys tells me your ship's entered in the Bendix. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to win it, too. Built the ship myself. Well, who's going to race it for you? Well, I don't know yet. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd be willing. Sorry, Paul. I promised my back as I wouldn't try unless it was for them. Oh, that's too bad. Say, Paul, do you remember that girl, uh, Tony Carter? Used to be a student of yours? Yeah. You happen to know where she is? I've been chasing all over New York trying to find her. Well, I thought, uh... <laughs> didn't you two quarrel or something? Oh, no. Oh, maybe she got a little sore when I didn't write. You know how it is when a guy gets busy. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. The next time I see her, I'll tell her you're in town, huh? Uh, well, what happened to her? Did she give up flying? Well, that was your advice, wasn't it? Well, I didn't think she'd take it. Maybe you have more influence on women than you think. Well, so long, Paul. Nice to see you. Good luck in the races. Thanks. Uh, where's Tony? Have you seen her? He's under the plane, finishing the paint job. Oh, Tony! Tony! Hi, Paul. Just finishing that last coat. You want to help? No. I've got some news that may interest you. Oh, have you found someone to race her for you? Mm, no, but Randy Britton's back. Oh? He was looking for you. I didn't tell him where you were in case you wanted to know about it first. Well, it doesn't matter. One way or the other. He's, uh, he's leaving town soon if you want to see him. I... I don't care especially about seeing him. I wish you could say that, Nina. Oh, incidentally, um... How would you like to race this ship? Paul, you wouldn't. I've never trusted the luck, Tony, but this time I want to play my hunch. Oh, but, Paul, darling, you shouldn't. You ought to get a really good pilot. I'm only and... being practical. A top-notch pilot racer, he'd get all the credit. But if you win, a girl, well, you see, I'm being selfish. Oh, you don't know how to be, but I do. So don't tempt me now or I might say yes. You have, Tony. 
You race the ship. Oh, but Paul, look. I mean, if you... Oh, Paul. In a few moments, Rosalind Russell, George Brent, and Chester Morris will be heard in the second act of Flight for Freedom. But right now, Mr. DeMille will bring us a message of the highest importance. A message from the United States government. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to state a need, a crucial need now facing this nation. Meeting this need is up to the women of America. The courageous heroine of tonight's play, Flight for Freedom, was a pioneer in a field new to women. And today, in our fight for freedom, many women are pioneering in other new fields. There are gallant women in the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. Women fly warplanes from factories to military bases. Women are building planes and are building guns and tanks and ships. But tonight, I want to tell you about these and thousands of other women who are doing jobs not quite so spectacular, but vitally necessary to winning the war. Perhaps you've ridden in a bus or streetcar in the last few days that was operated by a woman. If so, you personally owe that woman a salute for doing a war-useful job. Women are running elevators, they're cooking and serving in restaurants, and they're doing dozens of other jobs. The next time you see one of these women at work, figure out, if you can, how that work would have been done if that woman wasn't there. And by the way, did your, did your laundry come back on time this week? If it did, you can thank the women laundry workers for that. If it hasn't shown up yet, the odds are your laundry can't find enough women workers. Now, here's the problem which our government has asked me to take up with you. It's a very human problem. Many women do not feel they are in a war job unless they're actually working in a war plant. Of course, these war plant jobs are very, very important. But the jobs that keep the home front running are just as important. Unless necessary services like transportation, food distribution, and laundries are continued, war production workers cannot give their best to their jobs. Some will not even be able to reach the factories. The lives of millions more will be disrupted, and the greatest production drive in history will suffer. This is a personal appeal to all the women listening now to think about this opportunity for them to serve in war-useful jobs and not in war production jobs alone. Any war-useful job is a patriotic job. It may be that your community has a critical need for women workers right now, or perhaps that need hasn't arrived yet. Watch your newspapers and listen to your local radio stations for an appeal for help from the United States Employment Service. Be ready to go to work when the call comes in your community. Remember, this war has never promised anything but blood and sweat and tears. If Americans sweat a little harder now, they can save some future blood and tears. That's the problem. The answer is up to you. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. for Freedom, starring Rosalind Russell as Tony Carter, George Brent as Randy Britton, and Chester Morris as Paul Turner. Play number five on the line. Prepare to take off. From New York Airport, blazing with floodlights, the racing planes take off, one by one into the night. In the cockpit of her tiny ship, Tony Carter handles the controls nervously. Scared, Tony? Petrified. Look, you're carrying 180 gallons. Cut it to 150 and refuel it with you. No, I'm going straight through, Joe. Plane number five, ready to take off. Are you ready, Miss Carter? Yeah, yeah, wait a second. Now look, Tony. Forget it, will you, Joe? Okay. Got the weather report? Yeah. Headwinds all the way up to 18,000 feet. At 20,000, I could catch a nice 30-mile tailwind. You could catch more than that without oxygen. Well, the worst that could happen to me is that I'd have to come down again to 10,000. Yeah, if you still had your sense to. Look, 
It's like getting a jag on. You feel fine. Nothing matters. And then you go to sleep. Anyway, you're just out to win a race, not break a record. You couldn't break it if you tried. One of Britain's records. Oh, I guess that settles that. Number five, take off, Miss Carter. Here we go. Goodbye, Joe. See you in Los Angeles. All the brakes, Tony. Thanks. Here in DX, Wichita, Kansas, all the contestants of the Bendix race are fighting adverse conditions. Reports indicate nothing but headwinds up to an altitude of 19,000 feet. You're only 17,000 feet. You can't get any place against this wind. It'll blow you back to Newark. Go on up a little. I was the one who taught her to fly. Oh, take it easy. Four feet on she ain't okay. Come in. Is anybody here still speaking to me? Tony! Hey! Hello, Paul. Are you all right, Tony? Yeah, how are you, Max? What did I tell you? I knew she'd show up. How's the ship? Tony, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Paul, will you hear what happened? Never mind that. Sit oh, down. Oh, and we just put in a call for the undertaker. Shut up, Max. Paul, you'll never forgive me, and I don't blame you. I got lost. <laughs> Oh, oh, please don't. I've ruined everything. I mean, your prize money, your chances to build a factory, everything. Well, you're here. That's all I care about. No, I finished last. Everybody beat me. There'll be other races. Oh, oh, nobody ever won that first big race. But I could have if I hadn't been greedy. I wanted to beat the record, so I went up to 19,000 feet to get a tailwind. 19,000? Yeah, I'm a smart girl, I am. I swore I'd come down the first second I started to feel badly. But I didn't. I felt fine. So relaxed. Just as if I were floating. And then I woke up. I guess I was about 3,000 feet. I don't know. Oh, Paul. Well, you woke up. That's what counts. I didn't think I'd feel like dancing again ever. Oh, you've been swell about it, Paul. Oh, sure, sure. What are you looking at? A man over there. You want to meet him? Not particularly. It's, uh, it's Randy Britton. Not particularly. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're going to. Hello. Mind if I cut in? Hello, Randy. I'll see you at the table, Tony. Hello. Hello. I've been away, you know. Yes, I know. I've been away for two years. Two years? That's a long time. I guess you've forgotten how I felt about the two years ago. It's worse now. I, uh, I hear you're going out to Singapore. I don't have to leave for a couple of days. <laughs> well, that's just fine. Let's go and sit down with Paul. What's the matter? I'm tired. Well, Paul, I hope you have sense enough not to let Tony try the Bendix again. Oh, she's a pretty good flyer. Being a good flyer isn't enough. What happened, Tony? Get off your course? I followed a railroad and found out too late I was on the wrong track. Oh, that can happen to anybody. Yes, I know. Hey, that's a nice cigarette case, Tony. 
I'm glad you think so. I've always liked it myself. New York, Delaware. Ever think of adding any more stones to it? No. I like it the way it is. Hello? Tony, this is Randy. Were you asleep? Yes. Well, did you know I'd call? Listen, Tony, have you ever tasted the crab at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco? We could make it tonight. Sorry, I'm not in the mood. Look, uh, Tony, you're not sore with me, are you? Why should I be? Well, that's why I'm asking. I don't know. Look, honey, it's hard to talk on the phone. I'm down at the bar. Meet me in half an hour, huh? Goodbye, Randy. Half an hour. I'll be waiting. Hello? Hello? Yes? Look, I, uh, I want to get a number. I don't know I'll what... call it for you if you wish. Thank you. I, uh, I want to get Mines Field, the airport. All set, Miss Connor. Thanks. Uh, where's that official? Right here. I'll clock you as you take off. Is that all there is to it? Hmm, not quite. You've got a lot of flying to do. Twelve hours from here to New York is a record hard to beat. But if I do, it'll be official? Well, of course. As long as the seal on that paragraph is intact. Okay. Thanks. Where's Paul Turner? Waiting for news. He's inside there. You want me, Britton? Yeah, I've been looking for you. Yeah, what do you want? I ought to spell that map of yours all over the wall. You think I knew she was going to take off? No, I'd sure you know it. You and that trick plane of yours. That's all you care about. You're quite a flyer, Britton. But you couldn't think your way from here to that platoon. I know what the odds are against you. You're dead right you do. And if she crashes, it's because she's only had two hours sleep in the last 48. And still, you let her try it. You think you're the only person in the world who cares what happens to Tony Carter? Never mind the hymns. It's how it pays off. I'm leaving for Singapore tonight, but if she cracks up... Don't think I won't be around with the collection plate. Now, she's hurt. If anything happens to Shut her... Shut up a minute, will you? I don't blame you for feeling like that, but you see, she isn't going to crack up. She's practically in New York by now. What? A little over an hour ago, she was reported only 350 miles out of Mitchell Field. 350? That's the last word we had. Hey, Turner! Here it is! In New York, Mitchell Field. 106 p.m. An hour and ten minutes ahead of my record. Hey, she's made me look like a dope. <laughs> Tony Carter breaks record. Tony Carter on Goodwill Tour. Tony Carter in exhibition stunt flight. Tony Carter in fly flying test. Tony Carter. Tony Carter. Tony Carter. Sit down, Miss Carter. Sit down. I got the table already. Thanks, Johnny. What a flight. Flying from Chicago to New York. <laughs> Look, I got your name up on the nameplate. Right there from now on is where you hang your hat in this place. Oh, I should have worn one tonight. <laughs> Mike Martini. There's great names on those nameplates. Only the best. Look, I put you right next to Randy Britton. How's that, eh? Randy Britton. Oh, that's fine, Johnny. Sure. Oh, I miss that guy. Three years now he's gone. Where? Singapore. What he wants in Singapore, right in the hot spot, the middle of the world. Tony. Oh, hello, Paul. I'm sorry, I'm late. Ah, Martini. Right on time. Mike, the menu. Well, here's to a great flyer. And better than that, Tony, a flyer's flyer. And here's to you, who made it all possible. Well, how about what you made possible for me? The business, the factory? Oh, you paid me back plenty, Paul, by financing my flight. Well, hereafter, you can do your own financing. Out of your account in the Guardian Bank. I don't happen to have any account in the Guardian Bank. Oh, yes, you have. You, you've had one for years. You see, we've been partners, whether you liked it or not. Oh, now, Paul, you didn't. According to the last statement, you have, uh, let me see, uh, just a little over $100,000. 100000 Oh, darling, it's so like you, but I don't want it, honestly. Oh, well, not now, maybe, but later. After you quit. After I quit what? Flying? Sure. Tony, why don't you call it a career? Now, why not quit now while you're top? Oh, what on earth would I do with myself? Well, you start a brand new career, but with the same partner. Married. Oh. Well, we'd make a success of it, Tony. I know we would. You see, it would be my career, too, because you'd be all I'd ever live for and work for. Well, well, will you? Paul, I... All right. All right, don't say it. But I must say it. Because it's yes. 
Tony. Do, do you... I mean, I mean, Tony... Hey, let's get out of here. All right, where to? Well, let's go anywhere where we can be alone. I'll find Johnny and get the bill. Johnny! Delaware, Virginia Beach. Ever think of adding any stones to it? What's that? <laughs> go on. All right, never mind. Come on, Tony. I tried to pay the bill and Johnny wanted to kill me. Paul, before we're married, there's one more thing I have to do. Sure, darling, what? I can't explain it. Maybe I don't even know myself. But I have to fly around the world. Right around the middle of the world. Alone. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars Rosalind Russell, George Brent, and Chester Morris will return in Act Three of Flight for Freedom. Mr. Kennedy. Yes, Sally. No matter how often you tell us how good Lux Toilet Soap is, I bet you never proved it the way I did the other day. How was that, Sally? Well, I spent the weekend visiting some friends. The water's very hard where they live. So I tried the soap they had in the wash station just to see how it lathered. Then I tried the cake in the bathtub a different time. Then I got a cake of Lux Toilet Soap out of my suitcase. Well, for soap that gives lots of smooth lather and does it quicker, I'll take Lux Toilet Soap every time. Well, Sally, you've just explained exactly what we mean when we talk about that luxurious Lux Soap lather. Of course, you know, Sally, Lux Toilet Soap is a quality soap made of the very finest ingredients. That's why each cake is so satin smooth, why you get so much rich lather so fast. No wonder screen stars say their complexion soap makes such a grand bath soap, too. That wonderful Lux Soap lather feels like a caress on your skin. Leaves it really fresh and sweet in no time. Because the Lux Soap lather is active, Sally, and does a thorough job. And now, here's a suggestion to all you ladies who haven't tried Lux Toilet Soap. Make Sally's little test for yourself. Compare Lux Soap lather with that of other soaps you've used. Even in hard water, see if you don't find it the creamiest, smoothest lather you've ever used. You'll enjoy the delightful perfume of this fine toilet soap, too. A fragrance like many delicate flowers. A luxurious bath soap, but thrifty, too, because Lux Toilet Soap is hard-milled to last and last. Try Hollywood Beauty Soap, Lux Toilet Soap. It's patriotic, you know, not to waste soap, so use only what you need. Always keep your cake of Lux Toilet Soap in a soap dish that's dry. Now... Our producer, Mr. DeMille. After the play, we'll have a little hangar talk with our stars. But now here's the third act of Flight for Freedom, starring Rosalind Russell, George Brent, and Chester Morris. Tony Carter and a flight around the world was sighted this morning by the steamship Matsonia, 600 miles off Oahu. While the wings of Tony Carter's plane cast a swift-moving shadow on the Pacific. A man waits in the office of the Navy Department in Washington, D.C. He's Randy Britton, just returned from Singapore. He seems quiet, worried. His right arm is carried in a sling. How are you, Britton? Come in. How are you, Admiral Graves, gentlemen? Hello, sir. Sit down. When did you get in? Last night, sir. Oh, so that's where they got you, in the arm, eh? Yes, sir. Tell me, when did you make your flight over the Japanese-mandated islands? On January 12th, sir. Of course you know that flying over the islands is violating our agreement with Japan. Yes, I knew that, sir. But I got caught in a typhoon and went off my course. That's when I discovered I was over a Jap submarine base. Oh, come, Britain. You know Japan has pledged herself never to fortify those islands. Yes, sir, I know that. But the next thing I knew, I was being fired at. And the aircraft. Hmm. A sub base, eh? And probably landing fields and ammunition dumps also. Look at the map of the Pacific, gentlemen. An enemy arsenal. Its guns aimed at the Philippines, the Hawaiians, and at our west coast. Then there's a possibility of their attacking us? Not a possibility. A certainty. To protect ourselves, we must know exactly what the Japs are doing. I could make another flight over the area, sir. And if you were discovered? No, we've got to find an excuse which the Japs will accept 
caused pending planes to photograph every square mile of these islands, and we'll do it soon, before... But why do you keep looking at your watch, Britton? Are you anxious to get away? Oh, no, sir. You see, a friend of mine is flying to the Pacific, and I'm a little worried. She's an hour and a half overdue. Tony Carter? Yes, sir. Friend of yours? Well, I'm a friend of hers. She was off Oahu with the last report? Yes, sir. Sturgis, leave word we are not to be disturbed for the rest of the day. Gentlemen, I think I've found the solution to our problem. Navy Department, Washington, D.C., to Tony Carter, Pearl Harbor. Secret message. Navy Department requires your services for mission of utmost importance. Imperative you discontinue your world flight on some pretext and report Washington immediately. I'm afraid we've caused you a lot of trouble, Miss Carter. Not at all, Admiral. There's no trick to cracking up a plane on the takeoff. Uh. Miss Carter, you realize that everything that happens at this meeting must be kept absolutely secret? Yes, of course. Miss Carter, we want you to do a job for us. A big job. So big that I have no hesitation in saying that the safety of our country may very well depend on its successful outcome. Are you sure you want me? Yes. But if you volunteer, you do so knowing that the risks and dangers are very great. I should like to know what it is. We know that for years the Japanese have been fortifying the mandated islands. We must know the exact detail and scope of these preparations. And that, Miss Carter, is where you come in. How? Our plan is that you resume your solo flight. Then, somewhere between New Guinea and uh, the Hawaiian Islands, you'll get yourself in trouble. Yes? You'll radio a distress call that will be flashed across every front page in the world. What happens? Do I come down? Yes. Actually, you will land on a little speck called Gull Island to wait there until the Navy comes to take you off. But as far as the world knows, you are lost. There will be a widespread search for you. During that search, the Navy will photograph every square mile of those islands. Now, do you understand? Perfectly. There's just one thing that bothers me, Admiral. You see, I'll have to take off from New Guinea and aim for Gull Island, which I'd say is about uh, 2,000 miles away. It'll take some expert navigation to hit that pinpoint. Uh, We've considered that. The Navy will furnish you with a navigator who'll be waiting for you at New Guinea. I see. When do you want me to leave? Well, Tony, I'll say goodbye and good luck. Paul, aren't you going to watch me take off? Well, if you don't mind, darling, no. Oh, Paul, you're not worried about this flight, are you? Oh, no, you'll make it, I'm sure of that. I, uh, I wish I felt as sure as, well, about you. Me? Mm-hmm. Ever since you've come back from Hawaii, I've had the feeling that you've been shying away from me, as if there was something you were afraid to tell me oh, about. Oh, now, darling, you've just been imagining things. You sure you haven't changed your mind? The day I get back, we'll be married. <laughs> okay, sweet. Paul, in case something does happen to me on this flight... Oh, you'll to... make it all right. Yes, of course. But suppose I do have trouble and I have to come down. I mean... Suppose you don't hear from me for some time. No matter what happens, I want you to know that I'm coming back. Sure you are. You're coming back. To me. So long, Paul. Happy landing. And here's the latest on Tony Carter. Where does come that the high-flying lady of the world landed just a few minutes ago at Lai New Guinea? Miss Carter, I've reserved the royal suite for you. <laughs> a royal enough for a bath? With running water, two kinds, oh, both hot. Lead me to it. Mm. Good evening. Oh, this is Mr. Yokohata, the proprietor. How do you do? Miss Carter, welcome to Lai, New Guinea. Thank you. Rooms are ready for you. The gentleman you were expecting has gone out. Huh? Gentlemen? Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, of course. It, it must be the mechanic. Did he say he wants to meet me? It was my understanding. Perhaps it was uh, a mistake? What's his name? Mr. Johnson. Oh, would you tell Mr. Johnson? I'd like to see him as soon as he comes in. Of course. Thank you. Hello. How are you, Miss Carter? What? Randy. Don't be surprised. 
least not out loud. Close the door and come on out on the porch. Well, what's all this about? What are you doing here? Oh, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Johnson. Harry Johnson, navigator. And you? Why not? I put in for the job. I figured you and I ought to make quite a team. You don't seem very happy to see me. Shall we talk business? Okay. What time do we take off? Six in the morning. Better make it five. It'll still be dark. I'll be hiding in the plane. And I guess you know as well as I do how important it is for the famous Tony Carter to get lost. Alone. Yes. And furthermore, Miss Carter, I might add that you strike me as being even better looking than you were, let's see. Was it three years ago when you set me up at that bar in Los Angeles? Yep. A lot better looking than I thought. And believe me, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. You know that feeling when you get up to 20,000 feet? Way up where the air is thin? Well, I've got it now. Tony. Tony, we can't go on like this. Just seeing each other every couple of years. Tony, you've got to marry him. Marry you? Yes, with a ring, license, preacher, and everything. I was going to ask you that night in Los Angeles, but you didn't give me a chance. You were going to ask me then? There was only you, Tony. Oh, Randy. Will you marry me? It may be months before they come for us. Now, let's get married right now, before we take off. What's the matter? Oh, Randy, Randy, why didn't you let me know before? Before? When? Before it was too late. What do you mean, too late? Another guy? Paul. Well, when did this happen? Just before I left. We're going to be married just as soon as I get home. Well, you're going to be married. You mean you're not married yet? Well, come on. There must be a missionary or somebody around here who can do the job for us right away. No, Randy. Well, I suppose you're trying to tell me you don't love me. I know better. You are sure of me, aren't you? So sure that all you have to do is take me in your arms and I'll follow you and leave Paul behind. Well, I won't. Because I've had it happen to me. I've been walked out on and left to break inside and pick up the pieces alone. I know what it means and I'll never do it to anyone. Never. Good evening. Good evening. I just wanted to make sure my bill would be ready before I leave in the morning. Oh, yes, Miss Carter. It will be ready. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Shall I also make up a bill for Mr. Britton? Huh? What did you say? Mr. Randy Britton. Aren't you making a mistake? Oh, Mr. Britton is too famous a flyer for me to make mistakes. He take off with you, uh, yes? Where on earth did you get that idea? So difficult, finding so small trace like gull iron. Why is to take along a fine navigator like Mr. Britton? But if your plan is to drop down on Gull Iron, it will interest you to know that ten minutes after your disaster is announced, a Japanese plane will discover you there. Within one minute, the world will be notified. It will not be necessary for the United States Navy to look for you over the Japanese mandated islands. Good night, Miss Carter. <laughs> important business that we do this job right. You won't know how important it is until the time comes when we tangle with the Jets in battle. What's worrying you? What would happen if we couldn't land on Gull? Why couldn't we? Through, well, uh, through lack of visibility or, well, I suppose when we get there we see a Jap ship down below. Oh, now, look, we've got plenty of trouble without your inventing any. What gave you that sweet idea? It might be there by accident. Or it might be that the Jets have found out our plans. They're not going to find out. Well, I mean... Suppose they do, and they were waiting there to take us off. What would we do? Well, if I'd been assigned to this job alone, I'd stick on. Where? Well, keep on going till I came down. Probably for keeps. Oh. You see, the important thing in this job is not being found. It's being lost. And you'd do that if you were on this job alone? Now, look. There's not going to be anybody down there waiting for us. You, you're just tired. you better get some sleep. Got an alarm clock? Yes, yes, I have. Better set it for 4.30 and stop worrying. My order is to land you on Gull Island, and that's what I'm going to. And when you get back home, everything will end the way you've got it planned. Well, 
Tony. Is that you? Yeah. I thought you were going to get some rest. Still worrying? Not anymore. But I can't sleep. I reckon I. I guess it must be the rain. Look at it. Like a curtain. Blacking out the rest of the world. That's funny. I was just thinking of the last time you said that. Driftwood fire on the Virginia Beach. Remember? Yes. Yes, I do remember. It was a wonderful evening, wasn't it? Tony, if I'd asked you to marry me that night, would you have said yes? Yes. You would? Right off? Hardly knowing me? I think I was in love with you, Randy, before we met. Just hearing about you. And then after we met, I knew for certain and all at once that you were the only thing in my life. Now I'm washed up? Now. Every time I see you, Randy, life begins for me. And it stops every time you go away. It's been like that since the first time I heard your name. Tony. Randy, I... Oh, Randy. You know what this means, don't you? Yes. You're never going back to... to what you planned. No, darling. I'm never going back to what I planned. Tony, I don't get this a little while ago. Darling, but... right now I feel 20,000 feet up, cut loose from the earth, with no thought of what's down below and no fears about the future. I'll never let you get away from me again. We'll be married and settle down. Yes, we'll settle I'll... down. I'll keep on flying, that's my thought. Oh, yes, Randy, you must always keep on flying. And we'll build a house. Where do you want it? Well, now, uh, let me see. Must I decide this minute... No matter where, it'll always be my landing field. How do you feel about families? Families? Oh, I... I like them large. So do I. How about three? Three? <laughs> I always planned on five. Five? All right, five. All boys. One girl. Okay, one girl. And I can tell you right now which one's going to be my favorite. The girl? The one girl. The only girl. From now on, Tony, it's you... And me, for keep. Oh, yes, Randy. For keep. Carter took off from Lye, New Guinea at 4.30 this morning on the final leg of her round-the-world flight. Radio Melbourne reports the following message from Tony Carter. Gas supply dwindling, weather bad. Stay tuned to this station for further bulletins. Our shortwave listening post reports no further word from Tony Carter. Growing concern is felt for the safety of the courageous woman flyer. WBB. Calling Cage WBB. Come in, Cage WBB. Come in, Cage WBB. Cage WBB calling SOS. Visibility worse, no sign of land. Only a few more minutes of gas left. Position doubtful. Cage WBB calling SOS. Calling SOS. Cage WBB. Can you give us any figures on position? Cage WBB. Is there anything at all you can give us? Cage WBB. Cage WBB. Got to get lost.
Somewhere in the Pacific, a girl was lost. They never found her. But her life was not given in vain. Now as our battle squadrons roar over the Japanese islands, they know where they are going. And they know what they'll find. And a man at the controls of a dive bomber presses the release button and delivers a screaming message of death to the Japs. And with each bomb goes a prayer. Make it count. This one's for you, Tony. Troopers like Rosalind Russell, George Brent, and Chester Morris have taken many curtain calls before, but none may deserve more than this one. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I'm very happy to be back again. You know, it occurred to me during rehearsals that you three have something in common that always commands my admiration. Well, Rosalind was very beautiful. He, uh, he said we had it in common, George. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Well, what I meant was your, your theatrical background. All three of you served your apprenticeship in stock companies. I like that. I went through the same mill. Well, as far as I know, it's the best school in the world for actors. What could be better? The first stock company I worked in, we played in a tent, the Tent Leap. Now, have you ever tried playing a heavy love scene with the rain running down your back? <laughs> That's the perfect time for somebody to hand you a cake of Lux soap, Roger. <laughs> well, now, I wouldn't use anything else. Lux soap has been my complexion care for years. Ah, an orchid deluxe there. I take it, Rosalind, that you recommend the stock company to develop uh, ingenuity and ingenuity? Yes. <laughs> but I'd rather recommend something else these days for every girl and every woman who is able to work. I hope all of them will try to take one of the war useful jobs you told us about earlier, Mr. DeMille. Now that our government must depend upon women of America to keep the home front running smoothly, I know that they'll all come through. Well, they always have. Uh, by the way, what's on the board for next week, C.B.? A play that scored a double hit, Chester. First on Broadway and then on the screen. It's Ladies in Retirement. And our stars will be Ida Lupino, Brianna Hearn, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett. This is a strange drama, entirely different from any we've ever presented. I think you'll like it. Because Ida Lupino gave one of her finest performances in the Columbia picture. And next Monday night, Brianna Hearn, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett join her to head a cast of Hollywood's finest players. And that's a play with plenty of surprises, C.B. Good night. 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 You all won your wings on these airlines. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Brianna Hearn, Ida Lupino, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett in Ladies in Retirement. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Rosalind Russell's latest picture is the Columbia production, 10% Woman. Heard in tonight's play were Merrick Windheim, Charles Calvert, Charlie Lung, Fred Mackay, Norman Field, Tudor Marson, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Herb Vigran, Robert Harris, and Howard McNear. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Ida Lupino, Brian Ahern, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett in Ladies in Retirement. <laughs> <laughs>